Hi, my name is Chris, and my name is Walker, and we are here to talk to you about guns. So right now, as everybody pretty much knows, gun control is a really big issue in this country. It's overtaking gun uh, abortion in a lot of ways. It's one of those topics that pretty much everybody has a very strong opinion about one way or the other. However, a lot of people with very strong opinions aren't actually educated on what guns are, what they can do, what they cannot do, and um, just capabilities in general. Uh, so the first half of our presentation, um, I'll be talking about what a gun is and how the ammunition actually works in a gun and actually how the gun works. And then Mr. Walker here will be... Um, and I will be going into the AR-15, which is kind of the focal point of a lot of the gun control pushes that are going on in the country. Um, I am an army vet. This is actually the weapon that I used uh, during my term of service. So I know a whole lot about it. And uh, yeah, so without further ado. Well, first off, we're gonna start off is, what is a gun? A gun is a ranged weapon designed to unanimously discharge part, uh, projectiles. Most guns fire solid objects, some fire liquid, as in water, or charged particles, and tethered, which is a taser gun. The weapon incorporates a metal tube, which uh, bullets, shells, or other objects are propelled by an explosive force, making a loud, sharp noise. A bullet. A bullet is a component of a firearm ammunition and the projectile expelled from the firearm's barrel. It is composed of a bullet, a case, a propellant, rim, and primer. The case holds everything together, so this is how bullets are actually fired. The primer is struck by the firing pin, which then ignites the propellant. The propellant is gunpowder, or quite light. Then, once fired, the propellant sends a bullet firing down the barrel of a gun. Um, so this is the primer right here. Primer is right in the center of the base of the bullet. This is the bullet case, and in the black stuff in the center, this is all your gunpowder. And then on top is your bullet, which sends down from the um, from the rim. Next slide, please. So there are three different types of guns in the world today. Our first one is handguns and pistols. Uh, second, we have rifles, which is this one right here, and your third is a shotgun. At the end. So first off is the handgun. A handgun comes in many different shapes and sizes, but they all have the same characteristics. A handgun slash pistol is fired with one hand. It has a grip, a frame, a trigger, a recoil spring, a barrel, and a firing pin and sight. These bullets are loaded in a magazine, then pushed up into the base of the gun. The gun's top frame is pulled back to load the barrel with a bullet. While the bullet is being loaded, the spring in the firing pin is being compressed. Once the frame is fully pulled back and is released, the gun is ready to be fired. To fire the gun, the trigger is pulled, releasing the spring with the firing pin, which then strikes the primer, sending the bullet down the barrel. Next is shotguns. A shotgun is very different from a handgun and a rifle. The shotgun is held with two hands and is placed on the shoulder. The firing mechanism of a shotgun is similar to all the other guns, but what makes it different from other guns is that it fires a variety of different ammunition. Most commonly used are a bunch of metal pellets, which spreads out when fired. Also, the shotgun is loaded differently, and the casing of the shotgun pellets looks different from normal bullets. So as you see, this is our normal bullets, and our two at the end are shotgun bullets. Next slide, please. Lastly, rifles. There are many different types of rifles, specifically for different types of jobs. The rifle is fired with two hands, one hand on the grip, which um, is close to the trigger. Second hand goes on the handguard. The rifle's butt is braced against the shoulder when fired. The rifle looks like any other gun. The difference with the rifle to a handgun is that the rifle is bigger in size, the bullets are bigger, the barrel is longer, and it has a much more powerful than a handgun. Next slide, 
just like these. All right, so AR-15, big misconception about the AR-15. AR does not stand for assault rifle. It does not stand for automatic rifle. It stands for Armalite rifle. It was originally developed in 1956 by the Armalite Corporation. That's why it's called Armalite rifle. Now, while certain variants of it are classified as assault rifles, many do not fall under this classification. For example, the M4, which is a standard issue weapon of the US Army, it's the weapon I used. It's actually a carbine. Its barrel is too short to be classified as an assault rifle. The M16 that some of Marines sometimes do still use is classified as an assault rifle because it has a longer barrel. Now, in 1959, the Armalite Corporation was having some financial difficulties. So they ended up selling the rights to the uh, AR-15 to Colt. Colt made some minor adjustments and redesigns and marketed the new Colt Armalite AR-15 to the US military. One of the biggest differences between modern models and the original Armalite model is this guy right here. This is the charging handle. It's what you pull on to rack the bolt back and pr prime the weapon for firing. This is where it is in the original Armalite model. Colt moved it back here. Slide. Now, when Colt marketed, came to the US Army, US military, with th this new improved AR-15, the Army, or the military in general, I believe it was the Air Force mainly, that uh, tested it out, and they found that the smaller 5.56 millimeter rounds were much easier to shoot with than the heavier rounds, generally 7.62 millimeters, that the AR-15's counterparts and main competitors used. A great example of this is in 1961, marksmanship testing, the US Army found that 43% of AR-15 shooters qualified expert in uh, just marksmanship, which is how well they were able to hit the target at various ranges. However, for the M14, which was the AR-15's main competitor at the time, only 22% of shooters did this. That's actually an insane difference. It's literally twice as good. Now, additionally, they found that the AR-15's lower recoil due to the smaller rounds uh, and uh, spring buffer system allowed for more, much more controllable automatic fire. Slide. So, exterior, exterior components of it. First, we've got the upper receiver. That's pretty much all of this. It's the top half of the gun, basically. And then we got the lower receiver, which is all of this. Uh, we got the bolt release, which is just a little flapper paddle that um, is normally, when the bolt is locked to the rear, it's locked there. The only thing that will get it to go forward is pulling the trigger. Now, when you don't want to fire the gun, but your bolt's locked to the rear, you press this and you can slide it forward gently without actually firing the weapon. This uh, is the magazine release. On the other side, there's a button that you push, drops the mag. This guy right here is the charging handle. Uh, it's what you pull back to lock your bolt to the rear. This is your fire selector. It's safe, it's currently on fire. Don't ever leave it on fire. Now, contrary to popular belief, due to the AR designation, a lot of people think that means automatic rifle. AR-15s are not automatic, outside of certain variants that can only be uh, acquired, really, if you're in the Special Forces. Now, the military uh, versions of this rifle, the one that I used, do have a burst fire uh, option, which is back here. Slide. By the way, that is not actually available for civilian use. So this guy right here is the dust cover. It's just uh, basically a flap that covers uh, the port that shell casings are ejected from. Um, during firing, this will flap down there. It's got a spring in it to keep it down there and then a little uh, soft latch that uh, firing
firing the weapon will cause it to go down, will allow rounds to get ejected, uh, and then in order to keep in order to keep dirt, anything else that you don't want in there from getting in there and causing your weapon to jam, you just flap it back up, and it's good. Rear sight post, as you can see, this is a peep sight that is the most common uh, option as far as uh, iron sights go. The it's basically this hole right here. You just put your eye in that little hole and you sight based on your front side post, put your front side post on the target and you fire your weapon and it should hit. Forward assist, this is basically a button that you just hit with your hand uh, that ensures that the bolt is fully where it should be, where it's supposed to be in order, in order for proper firing. Uh, this is the stock which you put into your shoulder. This is the mag release, a little button that I talked about earlier. Magazine, the various different sizes. Um, trigger, grip, pretty self-explanatory um, slide. So, as far as the actual firing process for the AR-15, the first thing you do is you pull the trigger it releases the hammer, the hammer slams up against the firing pin, the firing pin uh, strikes the primer in the bullet uh, casing, ignites the gunpowder within. Now when gunpowder ignites, it actually basically vaporizes. It turns into a very high pressure gas and that is what propels the bullet down the barrel. Right here, we have a gas port. This high pressure gas flows up and back down the gas tube and back into the bolt, which uh, pushes it back into uh, ready position, basically. This locks the hammer back down against the trigger, which in semi-automatic firing, it is actually locked. It will not fire again unless the trigger is pulled again. But, so current uses. Currently, AR-15 rifles that are available to civilians are primarily used for sport shooting and for home defense. Its lightweight, accuracy, low recoil, and semi-automatic firing profile make it ideal for these situations. Now, a lot of the gun control arguments is about the size of the magazines for a semi-automatic weapon. Why do you need that many bullets if you're just defending yourself? Well. Most of the time that you're having a home invasion, it's night, it's dark, you probably just woke up, you're actually most likely panicking. Your ability to actually hit the target is gonna be very low. So you need more bullets in order to be able to effectively defend yourself. And uh, the M4 remains to this day, uh, going on 70 years later after it was the AR-15 was originally invented, it is still the standard issue weapon of the US Army U.S. Air Force, and it is steadily overtaking the M16 as far as popularity in the U.S. Marine Corps. 